Beneath the hot desert sands of the ancient Egyptian necropolis of Saqqara, one of the greatest riddles of antiquity is hidden. And in this case, this is meant quite literally. How on earth did the inhabitants of the Pharaonic kingdom manage to hew their gigantic granite sarcophagi, each weighing 100 tons, out of single blocks of stone, and then maneuver them into a labyrinthine tomb deep underground? Does the Serapium of Saqqara really only represent a place where the sacred Apis bulls were buried in oversized coffins? Or did the stone colossi perhaps serve a completely different purpose? Well, the alternative camp believes it knows the answer to this question. And in truth, the Serapium is said to have formed the centerpiece of a lost high technology that we no longer dare to dream of today. Have you ever heard of the Bell as 75710? If not, we'll be happy to fill you in. With a payload of 450 tons and a total mass of 810 tons, it is in fact the world's heaviest serial produced dump truck. Understandably, you are now wondering why are we telling you this at all? But the answer is quite simple. After all, even this monstrous construction vehicle would have had to make five trips to transport all the granite sarcophagi to their intended places in the Serapium of Saqqara. In fact, this mystical tomb contains no fewer than 24 gigantic coffins, each weighing an incredible 100 tons. However, since we do not believe that the ancient Egyptians had access to large dump trucks, one question inevitably arises. How was this even possible? The sheer weight aside, the question of how the ancient inhabitants managed to work such hard material as granite with the simple means of their time is still one of the most confusing historical mysteries of all. After all, according to current doctrine, they only had simple hand tools such as saws, small hammers, and soft copper chisels at their disposal. But in addition to the mystery surrounding its construction and transport, the true purpose of the Serapium of Saqqara is also repeatedly the focus of heated debate. What we can say with certainty is that beneath the desert floor of the legendary necropolis, there are approximately 340 meters of catacombs, with 28 niches branching off at right angles. The 24 sarcophagi mentioned above are enthroned in them. These are on average 4 meters long, 2.5 meters wide, and 3.5 meters high. However, since it would be difficult to place the mass of giants on a standard scale, the experts have to rely solely on estimates regarding the weight. And these estimates suggest that each of these stone chests weighs between 70 and 80 tons and is completed by a coffin lid that weighs 20 tons each. However, the whole thing becomes even more impressive when we realize that the sarcophagi were by no means composed of countless individual blocks but were always carved out of a single block. But that's still not all. The material used also came from Aswan, and thus from a quarry hundreds of kilometers away from Saqqara. How the granite blocks were meticulously shaped and some of them cut at exact 90 degree angles seems just as mysterious as how they were then transported down into the depths. But why did the ancient Egyptians devote themselves to such a demanding undertaking in the first place? The Apis Cult of the Ancient Egyptians Well, through the purely conservative historical glasses, the matter is clear. As mentioned, the Serapium served as the place where the sacred Apis bulls were worshipped and finally laid to rest. The reason why the cattle had such an extraordinary significance at the time becomes clear to us when we consider what the Egyptians saw in them the embodiments of the god Ta, who, as the creator god, is said to have once created man from clay. In order to be recognized as his reincarnation, the Apis bulls had to have a certain coat color. And indeed, a certain Herodotus reported that the Egyptians even crafted magnificent columned courtyards, including monumental statues, in honor of their hoofed deities. And while the Apis bulls also took part in solemn processions during their lifetime, they were mourned in the context of a 70-day period of national mourning in their absence, during which the cult followers, among other things, did not eat meat, did not wash, and let painful lamentations ring out. Before the deceased bull was transferred to the Serapium, it was first embalmed and mummified in a 60-day procedure. But who actually commissioned the construction of the tomb? 
Well, according to official history, the Serapium was built at the behest of Chemawaset, a son of Ramses II, who lived between 1281 and 1225 BC. When the French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette rediscovered the complex in 1852, its location had been forgotten for centuries. And yet, Mariette immediately sensed what an archaeological sensation he had just stumbled upon. No wonder, after all, a precious Apis statue caught his eye immediately behind the entrance gate. And the comparable artifacts of this kind ultimately left no doubt that the Frenchman had brought the mysterious Serapium to light. However, there was still a small, but all the more confusing catch. Wouldn't you expect an Apis bull tomb to contain some Apis bulls? The Mystery of the Empty Sarcophagi If you like, Mariette was lucky in his sobering misfortune. After he had discovered 22 of the 24 granite sarcophagi in walled-up niches, and the remaining two in side passages in the so-called Great Galley, he didn't need to blast their massive lids off to catch a glimpse inside. In fact, someone had already managed to push almost all the lids a little way to the side without damaging them. And just to remind you, we're talking about a scale of 20 tons here. But in the end, a closed coffin was found in the Serapium after all. And after Mariette and his team had tried in vain to lift the lid using pure muscle power, they were forced to resort to dynamite only to discover with resignation that this stone box was also empty. Exactly like all the others, by the way. But how could that be? Did grave robbers perhaps once enter the Serapium to steal the sarcophagi containing the bull mummies? Well, that is at least debatable. When Marriott entered the Serapium, he collected around 7,000 artifacts there, which were then transferred to Paris, where they are still kept in the Louvre today. It is said that the French Egyptologist pondered the mystery of the empty tomb until the day of his death, and yet it could have been so simple. Ask any historian today why the sarcophagi of the Serapium contain no mummies and you will usually be confronted with the keyword, Coptic monks. After all, they are said to have stolen and destroyed the bodies of the bulls in ancient times in order to put an end to the cult of Apis. And it is indeed a historical fact that the Serapium was closed by order of the Roman Emperor Honorius. But how did the destruction-loving monks manage to push aside the coffin lids, which weighed tons, and drag the bull mummies through the narrow crevices? No less puzzling is the fact that in one case, they even went to the trouble of closing the empty sarcophagus again later. And was it also the monks who then sealed the lids with several layers of small stone blocks? Because there is one thing we must not forget. According to some reports, Mariette is said to have found exactly that on the coffins when he saw them for the first time. It almost looked as if someone had tried to weigh the lids down. But why would they have done that if the creatures inside had long since died? Of Bodily Giants and Ancient Power Plants the internet would not be the internet if we did not have a, well, amazing answer to this question. Could it be that no bulls were buried in the Serapium at all, but that bodily giants were locked away there forever? Wherever this theory is discussed as a serious alternative, the biblical Nephilim are not far away. And according to the Holy Scripture, these were gigantic creatures that were conceived by divine beings and human women and plunged the world into utter chaos. Ultimately, God destroyed the Nephilim with a great flood, and apparently, according to the highly controversial assumption, some of them were later buried in gigantic granite coffins, which somehow ended up in Saqqara. Why the sarcophagi were empty when they were rediscovered, and what happened to the Nephilim, is another question altogether. Another question is whether the ancients were really as simple-minded as is commonly assumed or whether they were ultimately capable of conjuring fully functional power plants out of thin air. It may be hard to believe, but true. Many an alternative-minded person sees batteries in the 100-ton boxes of the Serapium, rather than bull coffins. Against this background, the site was in fact used to produce artificial light based on an ingenious interplay of gas, pressure, and electrical charges. Whether biblical giants and ancient high technologies really represent the more plausible approaches is something that everyone must decide for themselves at the end of the day. 
and yet it is undisputed that the Serapium of Saqqara continues to hold humanity in suspense even thousands of years after its completion, and that there are still many of its secrets to be revealed in the future. And we will now reveal the secret of how you will never again miss a new video from us. Please feel free to click the thumbs up and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. See you soon!